محمد و آل محمد صلوات محمد و آل محمد صلوات شہن شاہ عالم امام زمانہ ہٹا دیج غیبت کا پردہ خدا را شہن شاہ عالم امام زمانہ ہٹا دیج غیبت کا پردہ خدا را نہیں دل کو تسکی نہیں چین و راحت تباہی ہے مولا اور خطرے میں عزت ڈبی ماسیات میں ہے ساری یہ دنیا ہٹا دیج غیبت کا پردہ خدا را شہن شاہ عالم امام زمانہ ہٹا دیج غیبت کا پردہ خدا بور میں ہے کشتی بہت دور ساحل یہ امی یجیب المزترہ کی تفسیر نہیں آپ کے بن کوئی اب سہارا ہٹا دیج غیبت کا پردہ خدا را شہن شاہ عالم امام زمانہ ہٹا دیج غیبت کا خدا را حفاظت بیما کی ہو گئی مشکل مدد کی جو مولا ہم مجبور آجز ہوا دل جو مازوں تو تم کو پکارا ہٹا دیج غیبت کا پردہ خدا را شہن شاہ عالم امام زمانہ ہٹا دیج غیبت کا پردہ خدا ہماری جو بگری ہے ان کو بنا دو جو غفلت میں سوئے ہے ان کو جگا دو ہے ظلمات دنیا میں کر دو اجالا ہٹا دیج غیبت کا پردہ خدا را 
شہنشاہ عالم امام زمان ہٹا دی جغیبت کا دا خدا را نہ میں شر جزا بھی سزا بھی نہیں ہے کوئی کہتا ہے کہ خدا بھی نہیں ہے نہیں آپ کے بن دی کا سہارا ہٹا دی جغیبت کا پردہ خدا را شہنشاہ عالم امام زمانہ ہٹا دی جغیبت کا پردہ خدا را محمد وعالی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم Sheikh Mushtaba Khaliq, Haj Hasnain Rajab Ali, respected elders and brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. On this blessed occasion of Viladat of Imam Ali and Naki, I would like to wish you all a khushali mubarak. Surah Fatiha is requested for Isal Sawab of Marhumin listed on the screen for all Marhumin. Aya Ami Jeep is requested for the names listed on the screen and for all those in need here and elsewhere. Inshallah, we'll recite Aya Ami Jeep. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ami Jeep al-Mutarra iza da'ahu wa yakshif al-Suh. Ami Jeep al-Mustarra iza da'ahu wa yakshif al-Suh. Ami Jeep al-Mustarra iza da'ahu wa yakshif al-Suh. Amai yujib al-mustarra iza da'ahu wa yakshif al-suh Amai yujib al-mustarra iza da'ahu wa yakshif al-suh On Saturday, August 17th, there will be an interactive session with Haj Hasnan Rajabali here at the Masjid. This program is open to the entire community. And it is intended to shed light on the current state of youth and children in America as seen through the lens of an educator and founder of Wise Academy. Wise Academy is an Islamic college preparatory school for offering acad academic programs for grades pre-K to 12. Haj Hasnan Rajabali has been guiding and counseling youth and parents for the last 30 years. The open Q&A format will provide for an engage, engaging time where parents and youth can discuss various issues, many, various issues many young Muslims are facing today. The program will begin at 6.30 with dinner, inshallah. On Sunday during the Eid Ghadi program, there will be a kids workshop. There will be a kids workshop for children ages 3 and 11 which will start right after Maghrib and Salat. Let's take our chil children to the journey of Ghadir, where they will understand the events of Ghadir 
give bay'ah to Imam Ali alayhi salam and end with renewing our bay'ah to Imam Imam Mehdi akhir zaman Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad All parents are requested to register their children by tomorrow for questions or for more information please contact sister Tahira Jafar Today we are fortunate to have with us over the next few years Haj Hasnain Rajabali from Dearborn, Michigan. Haj Hasnain Rajabali needs no introduction. Having visited Orlando on several occasions over the past few years, in addition to lecturing at Islamic centers and universities all around the world, Haj Hasnain Rajabali has dedicated his time and service towards developing youth to be well-balanced, positive contributors to the society while maintaining their faith as Shia Muslims. At this time, please join me in welcoming Haj Hasnain Rajabali to deliver tonight's lecture with a loud salawat, inshallah. Allahumma salli ala. Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is the Fatiha. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله الحمد لله الذي أنزل الفرقان على عبده ليكون للعالمين نذيرا والصلاة والسلام على خير خلق ونور عرش أفضل الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيبنا وسيدنا وسندنا وشفيعنا ومولانا أبي القاسم محمد <تصفيق> وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المأسمين المظلومين أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتاب المجيد وقوله الحق وهو أسق الصادقين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه أولئك الذين هداهم الله وأولئك هم أولو الألباب صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوات على محمد وآل محمد I begin in Allah's name the beneficent the merciful and all praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for granting us this life and for giving us the opportunity to exist when we could not demand it when we were nothing and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his infinite mercy has shaped us but created an environment, a universe, that in our scientific knowledge is a little over 13 billion years old, and that Allah has created this spectacular universe that we know of, for there are many more that we don't know of. And even within this spectrum of the universe that Allah has created us, we are a minuscule speck among the stars, and we are just on a planet and within this planet, we're even a smaller particle, and yet we're so important. Allah says, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ Indeed, we honored the children of Adam, and the fact that Allah has created this spectacular universe to contain us and to give us the opportunity to reap its benefits is a tremendous ode to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, أَلَمْ تَرَوْا أن الله سخر لكم ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وأسبغ عليكم نعمه ظاهرة وباطنة. Do you not see that we made the universe subservient to you, that which you can see and that which you cannot see, and that it is all for you to utilize? And Allah says, don't be contentious. In other words, don't be ungrateful and don't challenge unfairly. Uh, without understanding. And therefore Allah wants us to realize that His mercy is so much upon us that even if we digress, even if we move away from the truth of the matter, He gives us time and a chance with which to 
uh, recover and to correct ourselves. You know, Allah says to the Holy Prophet, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَةُ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Say to my worshippers, when they have gone beyond their limits, that do not lose hope in my mercy. لَا تَقْنَةُ You know, the, the, the mercy of Allah. إِنَّ اللَّهِ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ He forgives all. He is oft forgiving. So we must recognize in all conversations and in all lectures and in all sessions and in all gatherings and when we get together for dinner or lunch or we go out or we go to work, when we have children, when we get married, we have families and in our social gatherings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that remember me, فَيَّا farhabun, Meaning that put me in the center of your conversation because I am the cause of all that is good. And it is because of my infinite goodness that I have given you existence. And your objective as a created entity is to recognize this infinite mercy of God and that you must submit to its infinite nature of good and submit to it with the realization that everything you do returns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, so, and I begin in Allah's name on this note that Allah has truly blessed us. And congratulations to the Ummah for the birth of Imam Ali al-Naqi al-Hadi alayhi salatu wa salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. In which some narrations say that he was born on the 15th of Dhul-Hijjah and that he was in a period of time where the Abbasid Caliphate was on the decline and it was being pressured by the Turks at that time to be pressured and of course history has an interesting way of meeting out the what we call the rise and fall of empires. And within that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing us. الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا He created death and life to test which of you is best in deeds. And it is imperative that you and I who are living, who were born from death, يُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ وَيُخْرِجُ الْمَيِّتَ مِنَ الْحَيِّ وَيُحِي الْعَرْضَ بَعْدَ مَوْتِهَا That you and I will also taste death and that we will go into the next world whether we like it or not. And therefore we must ask the question, what is our objective on this earth? What do we need to do to fulfill our objectives in this, on this transient earth and do our acquisitions and the glory of the material acquisitions of this world? Is that sufficient to count as merit on Judgment Day. When Allah says, Al-Mal wal-Banoon, Zeenatul Hayat al-Dunya, Wal-Baqiyatul Salihat, Khayrun inda Rabbika Thawaban, Wa Khayrun Amala. So, the Mal and Banoon, meaning your wealth and your children, are the beauty of this world. And it is beautiful. You know, you look around in this beautiful mosque, for example, it's very pleasing to the eye. It's majestic. It's beautiful. It's inviting. It's magnetic. The question, of course, we have to ask is, Allah says, وَالْبَاقِيَاتُ الصَّالِحَاتِ What is left are your deeds. Meaning that it is the essence of the spirit in the glamour and the glitter of material things that truly counts on Judgment Day. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold us liable. That what did we do? ثُمَّ لَتُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَئِذٍ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ that on that day Allah will ask us, what did you do with my mercy and my gifts that I gave you? And Allah says, well, baqiyatu salihat What is left is the essence of our actions and transactions, be it with meager tinkerings of the earthly matter or the glamour of gold and glitter. Allah says, these are all beauties of this world. What, we, what is left are your deeds. And Allah confirms it. He says that to Allah, see, خَيْرُ عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ ثَوَابًا The most, meaning valuable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are our deeds which remains with us. And we have to, at all times, never forget that when we get together and when we exist, while we exist on this earth, that we keep reiterating this reality. Many a times we wonder why did Allah institute the five daily prayers when Allah says, Aqim as salah, you know, uh, maintain prayers. Maintain it. 
at different times, the sun, during the day and the night. And we wonder why, Ya Allah, why do you need our prayers? Allah does not need our prayers. We need to reconfirm the infinite mercy of Allah that continues to shower us regardless of whether we submit to Him or not. For Allah is most merciful and most forgiving. But when we do get together and we realize that this is an infinite grace of God, then we will begin to animate ourselves in the direction that we were created for. وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ Allah has made an announcement in Surah Ibrahim. وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ If you are grateful, I will give you more. If you are ungrateful, I will punish you with a severe punishment. Having said this, when you look around this world today, and given the fact that Allah has blessed us, and I must say that we, the followers of Ahlul Bayt, the lovers of Ahlul Bayt, particularly the Ja'afari school of thought, the Shi'i community, we are the most blessed people on earth. While all human beings, 8 billion plus, are blessed, we are the most blessed. For not only have we been endowed with the power and capacity to cut through knowledge and to speak with more erudition than the average population even within the walls of academia, because Allah has blessed us with the best role models, the finest, 124,000 prophets, the finest and the finest representatives who guard and protect the message of God. No religion on earth, there are thousands, have such principles that we have on earth today, which demands a constant representative to be a witness upon mankind as the guardian of the message of God and to give us hope and spirit that we, while we're being tested on this precarious earth filled with trials and tribulations, that we never lose hope through their examples of the past and through the living example of the living being Imam Sahib Zaman, Ajallahu Ta'ala Faraja, Salawat Allah Muhammad wa Al Muhammad. When we celebrate, you know, and the reason I say we are so blessed, you know, we have 12 Imams, 14 Ma'asumin, their birth, their death, their lives, their wisdom, their teaching is second to none in history. Universities even recognize that our Imams were the, you know, the, the ones who promoted the levels of knowledge and education that was essential for us to achieve tranquility. And Allah is showing us through this recognition when He says that you should recognize my gifts. And if you are grateful to it, Allah will give us more. That we have been endowed with the finest role models. That tonight when we celebrate the birth of an Imam, whether it's the 10th Imam, which is tonight, or the 9th, or the 8th, or the 11th, or the 12th, or the 1st, the Holy Prophet said, they're all me. Awaluna Muhammad, wa awsatuna Muhammad, wa akhiruna Muhammad, wa kulluna Muhammad. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. What makes this philosophy so powerful is the fact that there is no ambiguity in the continuity of the message of the Prophet. When the Prophet said, Ana Madinatul Ilm, wa aliyun babuha, wa man arad al Madina falyatiha min babiha, I am the city of knowledge and Ali is its gate. Whoever wills or wishes to come to the city, enter through this gate. The consistency of the gate reflecting the message of the Prophet is essential in time. For we cannot have beings who come under representation with different messages, which will ultimately lead its people to confusion. There is an essential necessity of the divine message to be consistent. You see, Allah says, فَاقِمْ وَجْهَكَ لِلدِّينِ حَنِيفًا فِطْرَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي فَطَرَ النَّاسَ عَلَيْهَا لَا تَبْدِيلَ لِخَلْقِ اللَّهِ ذَلِكَ الدِّينُ الْقَيِّمْ Maintain your faces upright. You see, فَاقِمْ وَجْهَكَ لِلدِّينِ حَنِيفًا فِطْرَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي It is the system of God. فَطَرَ النَّاسَ عَلَيْهَا Which He has placed upon mankind. And God doesn't change His system. لَا تَبْدِيلَ لِخَلْقِ اللَّهِ his system is consistent. His message is consistent. No other religion in the world has this kind of leadership where there's congruity between Adam and Imam Mahdi salam, that it is simply one message. Subhanallah. This to me is the genius of the religion of God. 
صلوات الله محمد وعلى محمد Now you and I may think, okay, brother, this is a, a very friendly audience you're talking about. It, it doesn't have to be. I speak as such in academia, even among hostile societies, and this is the truth. And Allah says, "Qul jaa al haq wa zahq al batil." It's the truth. It's prevalent, and it brings fruitful results. If you look at the geopolitics of the world today. And you see the obfuscation of the satanic systems trying to confuse mankind through all kinds of illusions, in trying to fool the constituent societies and nations into thinking one thing, whereas they're doing something else. Nobody on earth has the power to cut through it and meet the bull by the horns, except those who have this kind of guidance that I'm talking about. If you look at the geopolitics of the world today, the superpowers are trembling, and they can't sleep at night because of those people who are rising in the Middle East, fighting for justice and equity for humanity. That they need to silence them, and they are supporting tyrants who use machines and saws and bone saws to chop people up. And we just sh shrug our shoulders into thinking, what's wrong with that? That breach of justice, global justice. That is causing hundreds of thousands of people to die today, and the world is just simply shrugging its shoulders, the same as they were shrugging when Hitler came to power. And they say, "What's the big deal?" Then, when the tyranny really expands and it causes 60 million people, you know, to be annihilated on Earth, then we wake up and said, "Oh, where did we go wrong?" Hmm? I say that we have the best gift. And Allah has guided us through the Quran and through the actions of our prophets and imams with the best message. And I know we agree with this, but there's a reason why I'm saying that: the reiteration and the confirmation that you and I are the most blessed people on earth comes with a price. Let's not, you know, wipe our shoulders and say that's it. It's mine. I got it. I was the lucky one. No. Oh no. This is wealth. This is power. This is a responsibility that Allah on Judgment Day will hold us liable. If the Prophet was a witness over you, and you were a witness over the people. What did you do? Did you represent it properly after my endowments? And no one, I believe, will be punished more if. We are blatantly rejecting the rahmah of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Given what Allah has given us, I think we stand on Judgment Day the most questioned. But if we do submit, we are the most honourable. So in this time that I have, I feel very blessed to be in this community, and I pray that we continue to grow. For in my experiences when I travel the world and I go and speak in various communities. Nobody has been endowed with the kind of wisdom and knowledge and understanding as you and I have. Nobody, with all due respect to other religions and other people, they're all good. People have good intentions, good hearts. Their love for God cannot be compromised by us saying that we love God more than they do. Not at all. In fact, some are more sacrificial than us, but they are misguided, or they are taken in the wrong directions because they have been told the wrong thing. And they truly think that's the right thing. So tonight's presentation, briefly, is about synergy and what we call congruity. When I say congruity, meaning meeting of the minds, trying to understand each other is, I think, very critical. If you see the story of Musa alayhi salam, when Allah says to Musa, "Idhab ila Fir'aun, inna hu taqa." Notice Musa alayhi salam is not only a nabi; he's a rasul, and he is an ulul azam prophet, the most revered prophets among prophets. Immediately he asks Allah, "Rabbi shrah li sadri, wa yassir li amri, wahlul uqdat min lisani yafqa qawli." Why does he pray for that? Musa alayhi salam is in da has been now. Given a responsibility to go and face the worst tyrant on earth of his time, Pharaoh. Historians have noted that this man, the Pharaoh, was so arrogant 
that he built tall buildings and he called himself God. And he was so arrogant that he heard through the soothsayers that there will come a child from Yaqub, Bani Israel, that will remove him and destroy him. And he decided to preemptively prevent that by killing the firstborns among the Bani Israel. Allah says he plans, his arrogance has obfuscated his mind, has taken him in the wrong direction. But to punish him, he will raise this one. He thinks he can kill. I will send him, I will send my agent to his house. That's why when Pharaoh saw Musa, he said, did I not raise you? Were you not in my household? And Musa salam said, yes. So the realization that Allah says, I'm the best of planners. So you and I as Muslims, especially gifted with this, we must take into consideration the divine plan of God. That no inordinacy, no arrogance, no wealth, you see, can subvert or divert the plan of God. Today the superpowers of the world are doing everything to silence that cat that got out of the box in 1979. You know, which, you know who I'm talking about. And they can't stop it. You know, without being political in this matter, it's a philosophical matter. It's a lesson for us to learn. For I believe even the pundits in the world of intelligence realize that you don't mess with people who've got infinite vision. You don't mess with people who've got the best role models like Hussein ibn Ali in Karbala. You don't salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. You don't mess with those people. You can play your tricks for the short term, but these are not people who do things for the short term. No. They say, Allah repeats it often, that who are my agents? My agents transact for the long term. When Allah says, يُوفُونَ بِالنَّذْرِ وَيَخَافُونَ يَوْمًا كَانَ شَرُّهُ مُسْتَطِيرًا وَيُتْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَى حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا They give charity, food, they give food, they feed the hungry, the orphans, the wayfarers, the poor. Why? إِنَّمَا نُتْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ We do it for Allah. Why Allah? Because He is the cause of my existence. He is the cause of my sustenance. He is the cause of my return. But many of us don't believe in that. We truly think we're independent. We truly think we will not be held liable. When people do violate the core truths of life, unless they can hide under the garb of misunderstanding on Judgment Day, they will not escape it. That, by the way, Quranically definition is the true meaning of kufr. When you willfully reject the good. And Allah said, وَمَا يَجْهَدُ بِآيَاتِنَا إِلَّا كُلُّ خَتَّارٍ كَفُورٍ No one rejects my signs, except the one who is bent on rejecting. The one who is bent on creating fitna. Allah says in the Quran, you say, ظَهَرَ الْفَسَادُ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيَ النَّاسِ The fasad has started. Fir'aun was a fasadi. Fir'aun was mal'oon. And Allah is saying, now go to Fir'aun. But look at what Musa did. And we need to understand that within our own rights, there's something elegant even about Fir'aun. And I want to expose that today. Because I think it's important for us to recognize that. You find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He sends Musa, you see, it's very interesting. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Before I go to Musa, just a quick footnote. When the verse I mentioned, by the way, is in Surah Zumar, verse number 18. al So, those who listen to the word, see Allah's verses are the word. When Quran is recited, listen. Very important. Why listen? Because if you don't process, you will misalign it, you won't give it justice, you will misunderstand it. It's what, call, what we call lost in translation. You lost it in translation. Allah says, those who listen to the word then follow the best of it. 
Meaning they hear everything, then they pick what's the best. Meaning what is being said? Let's pick the best. Allah says, these are they whom Allah has guided. And Allah has guided who? The people deeply rooted in knowledge. Ulul albab. Who are the ulul albab? In another verse, إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ لَآيَاتٍ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ They reflect standing, sitting and lying on their sides. وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ They reflect in this grand creation and understand their purpose. So they say, رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا سُبْحَانَكَ فَقِنَ عَذَابَ النَّارِ You didn't create this in vain. Glory be to you, save me from my own ignorance, which will take me to hell. I'm paraphrasing here partially, because we only enter hell if we ignorantly want it. And we find that reflection, meditation, so when Musa alayhi salam is commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, go, right? Go to Fir'aun, innaw tagha. Musa says, Rabbi Shrahli, my Lord, expand for me my chest. Sadri, make my affair easy. It's not easy going to this tyrant who beheads people, who crucifies them, who kills firstborns indiscriminately and claims to be God. And he claims that he has so much power and authority. And Musa alayhi salam saw that because he grew up in his domain. So this guy is not easy to deal with. This is what you and I should be doing every day. My Lord, make it easy for us. Expand for us our chest. This trial is difficult. None of us in this room or for that matter on this earth is free from being tested. We will test you with fear. You will lose yourselves, your fruits, your money, your wealth, your family. We will test you with fear. Allah says, be patient. Give good news to the patient ones. Patience. Patience doesn't work without long-term thinking. When they give food, the Ahlul Bayt, when Fatima al-Zahra alayha, gave the food to the... To the the needy. Salawat ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. He says, Inna ma nut'imukum li wajhi Allah la nuridu minkum jaza'an wa la shukura. This is profound. We've all heard it. We've heard it. We know it. What I'm saying, we've heard it. It's not new. Allah says, فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّ فَعَتِ الذِّكْرَ Remind them. Reminding is beneficial. Say, ذَكَّرُ مَنْ يَخْشَى Who will listen to you? The one who has that cognition to recognize the grace of God. And this yaksha means you've realized this grand spectrum of God's creation. And now you're realizing that you're a particle in it. And that you have been given a mission. And you're the recipient of this infinite mercy. Now Allah says, submit. Say, man yaksha. Don't be like the one who's got hardness in these ears. Who doesn't understand what is being said. You know, like as if there's a heaviness in their ears. No. So, Fatima alayhi salam says, لا نريد منكم جزاء ولا شكورا إن نخاف من ربنا We are afraid of that day when we will be held accountable. يوما عبوسا كم طريرا We are aware of that day. We, we're too blessed. Our transaction is only for you, Ya Allah. Not for this worldly glitter, not for the material, not for the gains of this particle world, which is all important, which are essential tools that you and I must acquire, and we must not belittle them. The glitter and the glory, it should not be belittled. Allah says, قُلْ مَنْ حَرَّمَ زِينَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي أَخْرَجَ الْعِبَادِ Who made the beauty of this world haram for you? Allah says, I made it as a blessing for you in this world and in the next. Next, but use it as a tool. Long-term thinking. But long-term thinking requires careful modulation of transactions. Musa alayhi salam had long-term thinking. His plan was long-term. While Fir'aun is committing his crimes, Musa is watching. While Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is watching the Meccans, see, worship the idols in the Kaaba, he's watching. He's at the mountain of Nur, watching them, patiently waiting for his time when God will call him and said, now go and execute patiently. Long term.
This is why I'm saying on the geopolitics, you will see that when Allah says, "Wa nuridu an namun ala ladina stud efu fil ard." That it is our desire, you the mustad afin, meaning you oppress people, you will become the inheritors and the leaders of the world. It requires long-term thinking. If there's no long-term thinking, we will be the superpower of the world today, like we have today, who are Pavlovian with knee-jerk reactions, who've got no plans of what tomorrow is about, as we say, happy go lucky. And then they find themselves losing. And empires have crumbled. The Persian empires have crumbled. The Roman empires have crumbled. The British empire crumbled. The Spanish empire crumbled. All these empires crumbled because of the same reason. They lacked long-term vision. And here, by the way, long-term vision demands Allah. For if Allah is not in the vision, you don't have long-term vision. Your vision is short-term. Even if it's for a million years of ruling on this earth, it's short-term. And it will pass so quickly. And Allah says to Musa, you know, when Musa alayhi salam goes to the mountain, you know, he says, Inni anastu nara, I see fire. Sa'atikum minha bi khabarin. Let me go. When Allah talks to Musa, Allah says, Oh Musa, I am going to bring the day of judgment soon. This is thousands of years ago. But look how Allah is using the language. Soon. Because to Allah, a billion years is nothing. And for you and I, those of us who have lived the age that we've lived in, especially if we've lived old enough, we will see these young children as yesterday. I just say that at the camp, I saw some of the kids that I was involved with, like Brother Samir and this. You see their children now sitting in front of me. I say, oh my God, this was the same age when I met his, when I met him. Now he's a father. That time passes so quickly, like it has no, real values and Allah says the real value is what did you do in that time you lost so Musa alayhi salam when Allah is talking to him says oh Musa go to Fir'aun Musa says it's a difficult task but look what Musa asks Allah which I think is very important for us to consider in light of our trials and tribulations long-term thinking demands careful modulation of thoughts as a globetrotter I travel the world a lot by Allah's grace. I meet people of all kinds. I go to temples. I go to Buddhist temples. I meet scholars of all religions. Almost not all, but a lot of religions. And I study them. And I watch them. And I watch the Buddhists do this and bow down to Buddha. And I'm saying, is that shirk? What is shirk? What is it? Is this person bad? This person is kind. I get in the taxi, that same Buddhist who's got the statue of Buddha charges me exactly the amount he's supposed to charge me. He doesn't take one, you know, penny more than what he's supposed to. You know? And you say, what, is this a bad person? Allah says, no, they're all good. The world is good. Allah the ahsana. Kulla shayin khalaqa. All of mankind. Everything Allah has created is good. There is no evil. So then when we have a discord, when we have disagreements, it's not because one side is evil and the other side is good. It's because we have probably missed ourselves in translation, misunderstood. And often, if we take the time to carefully modulate ourselves, to listen to the grievances of all sides, we tend to resolve many of the conflicts that are totally, as we say, unnecessary. Now here's Fir'aun, who's a tyrant. What does Musa ask? Let me loosen my tongue hmm, so that they can understand me. Yafqahu qawli. So that he can understand. So that I don't go there and I just demand that he release my people. Look what Allah says, subhanAllah. This, is, this verse is spectacular. 45 Surah Taha. So, see, uh, actually before, 44. فَقُولَ لَوْ قَوْلًا لَيِّنَا Allah is saying to the Prophet, when you go to the Pharaoh, talk to him with a soft tongue. You think, soft tongue? I mean, that's, ISIS didn't read this verse, it seems. Um, Al-Qaeda didn't read this verse. I don't think they know this verse exists in the Quran. Because they don't have that. Musa alayhi salam, who's the, who's a Nabi and a Rasul of God, who has so much power, nine signs Allah gave him. 
a stick that turns to a snake. And the magicians knew this is real. And you know what's so beautiful in the Quran? When the magicians became believers, you and I, 14 centuries later, or thousands of years later, can never question the integrity of that miracle. Because if the magicians, who are the tricksters, were untricked, then what else is left? Yet Musa could have taken his stick, and he could have crawled up Pharaoh's neck and crushed it. But even then Allah says, you're not allowed. Because Islam is the religion of peace. It's a religion of submission. It's a religion of hope. Subhanallah. Allah says to Musa, فَقُولَ لَوْ قَالَ لَيِّنَا لَعَلَّهُ يَتَذَكَّرُ أَوْ يَخْشَى Wow! Really? This tyrant, this beast, this monster on earth, he has hope? Allah says, talk to him with a soft tongue. Maybe, maybe he'll pay attention and maybe fear will come into his heart. Really? There's hope? Allah says, yeah, there's hope for that. Many a times in our communities, we damn and condemn each other like as if we're the masters of the day of judgment and send each other to hell so quickly. Musa alayhi salam is not allowed to do that. He has to be gentle, kind, loving, caring, even with his arch enemy who wants him dead. This to me is Islam, which requires what? Now when Musa is asking, Yafqaw qawli, let them understand me. I think you and I have an obligation, brothers and sisters, that in communication, when we discuss matters, and we hear issues, when there are conflicts within the community, or when there are successes in the community, the Chinese whispers start to get bigger and bigger. It starts with story A, it becomes story X, by the time the 10th person has got it. Everybody adds a little salt and pepper, and before you know it, you have another product. So I advise us all, in this night where our Imams were masters of cognition, recognition, definition, to such levels that if we don't pay attention to what is being said on either side when there is a dispute, on either side when our families have disputes, our spouses have disputes, we have disputes between other people, people of other religion, if we are not careful with the recognition that Allah is watch, watching, hmm? that Allah sees, Wallahu basirun bima ta'amalun, God sees what you do. You'll be surprised that when we hold back our tongue, wal qadimin al ghayd, wal afin anin nas, they hold back their anger and they forgive mankind, you will see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends this verse, Wallah yuhibbul muhsineen. But how do you and I become muhsineen? Reflection, meditation, careful modulation, always giving the benefit of the doubt. Even when I sit with atheists, many a times I get annoyed. I remember when I first debated Barker, and Barker says, Your God is wrong. And people in the Muslim community, Astaghfirullah, he's going to hell. We like that. How dare you say Allah is wrong? Astaghfirullah. I said, he's an atheist. It's his right. He has to say that. But sometimes you get annoyed. Like, excuse me? How did you say that? I take umbrage to that. Allah says, لا يحزنك قولهم إن العزة لله جميعا Don't let what they say bother you. Honor for all is with Allah. تعز من تشاء وتذل من تشاء So I advise us all as a community. If there's one practical, pragmatic thing that we must always pay attention to is careful listening. Many a times in my life growing up, I made such silly judgments and I made comments about people and things only later on to realize how ignorant I was for I completely misunderstood what the other side was saying. In my life, many a times, and if there's one thing I ask Allah, that God, you gave me two ears and one mouth, I know why. You want me to listen twice as much as I speak. And we must listen, not just hear. And pay careful attention. Then when we pass judgment, we should do it on the basis of what is best for Allah. That which will last the longest. That which will bring the greatest return for its investment. I believe this community is at the crossroads of really growing and becoming very, very successful, inshallah. I pray for that. Our next generation, this young generation, some who do come and visit us in Michigan, 
they're intelligent, they're sharp, they're witty, and they have a tremendous future ahead of us. And if we don't articulate with clarity their message, what they need to know, they will get confused. Many times I sit with 30, 40, 50 year olds who tell me I don't believe in God. I've become an agnostic. I've become an atheist. I've become a Christian. I sit with them. I said, tell me why. Oh, because of A, because of B. I said, how did you come to A conclusion? Oh, that's what was said. This is what I thought. This is what has been told of me. I said, how do you know? She says, isn't that true? I said, here, let me show you it's not true. And then the minute they realize it's not true and you pr prove it to them, suddenly they start to backtrack. Oh, really? Hold on. You mean I built this whole argument based on these arguments and you've just broken a few of them. So hold on now. I no longer have certainty in this direction which is contentious in my position. I said, yeah. You know, there are so many lessons for us. Three people came and asked Imam Ali alayhi salam the same question. Salawat. Allahumma salli ala. Three people. Each question Imam Ali alayhi salam answered differently. The companions were stunned. They said, Amir al-Mu'mineen, you answered three different answers for the same question to three different people. How did you do that? Should it not be one generic answer? One, you know, one size fits all? One pill works for all? He said, no. I gave the answer according to the understanding of that companion who came and asked me. And I fed them what they needed to understand. Why? Because, وَإِنَّمَا أَنَا نَذِيرٌ مُبِينٌ I am a clear warner. The Prophet says, Allah says to him, Say to them, قُلْ إِنَّمَا الْعِلْمُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَإِنَّمَا أَنَا نَذِيرٌ مُبِينٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he has sent prophets, right, to speak the language of the people. Why? So that they can be clearly understood. You see? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with this power of speech and communication, which changes directions, which has led to wars, which has led to destruction and death, and it has led to growth and, you know, what we call fruition and flourishing of societies simply because we've understood or misunderstood. In other words, to be respectively misunderstood and understood. And if we simply give everybody their chance to listen to them and to give them the option to always reform, this is the best Islam we can live by. Ibn Muljim who was the katil, the killer of Imam Ali alayhi salam, comes and asks for a horse, Imam gives it to him. Ibn Muljim asks questions, Imam answers him. The companion said, this is the man who's going to kill you. He said, I will give him justice, and I will give him what he deserves, lest he complains against me on judgment day that I was unjust. Allah says, Kunu qawamina lillahi shuhada bil qist, wa la yajrimannakum shana'anu qawmin ala ala ta'adilu. I'dilu, hu aqrabu lil taqwa, Maintain justice, even if it is something, maintain justice and let not a hatred of a people misdirect you into being unjust. وَلَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شَنَآنُ قَوْمٍ عَلَىٰ أَن لَا تَعَدِلُوا اِعْدِلُوا Maintain justice. Allah is giving fi'l al-amr command in the Quran. اِعْدِلُوا هُوَ أَقْرَبُ لِلتَّقْوَى وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ It is closer to piety. What is piety? Protection. Taqwa is protection. Allah says, protect yourselves. How? By being just. How? Listen. How? Keep your speech clear. How? Monitor your speech. How? Only speak when necessary. And don't be condescending or what we say, ad hominems, condemning and creating fitna and starting background talks and aiming at people because it carries its weight. See? And I conclude tonight, within this time, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with the birth of an imam who became an imam very early on. Some say six, some say eight years of age. Very young. And our blessed imam, despite all the trials and tribulations and the troubles of the Abbasid, from Mutawakkil to Mu'tasim, you know, all these people, if you look at them, they created so much trouble. Mutawakkil was a vicious caliph of the Abbasid uh, period. And Mutawakkil was so wicked 
and he hated Ahlul Bayt. It's interesting, you look at the Umayyads and the Abbasids, and today, you look at the, the emperor who's standing on the Kaaba, the emperor, MBS. If you see the same emperor today, we have the same emperor as Mutawakkil, who behead, who chop, who kill, indiscriminately bomb Yemen, kill, and then they lie through their teeth. You see? These people were vicious, but if you ask them one thing, even MBS said, is recording, he said, I will outdo, he says, my, my role model is Muawiyah. My role model is Yazid. He stated that. So when a person's role model is on the hatred of Ahl al-Bayt, and the foundation of haq and justice is through Ahl al-Bayt, then you and I are truly blessed with the flag of truth, isn't it? Hmm? That we have an imam, every period born, the tyrants of the time zoned in on them, and they silenced them, they moved them from their cities. Imam Rada salam was in Medina, he was moved all the way to Khurasan, only to be silenced. But proof is in the pudding, as they say. When the enemy knows who the Imam is, but the Imam is telling us, you see them? They're trying to subject us through tyranny, they're trying to suppress us through tyranny, they're trying to make sure we don't use our tongues, they're trying to make sure that the people don't get educated, don't worry. We are so driven long term that despite what they do, if they put us in prison like Yusuf, we will make the prisoners believers. That's our duty anywhere on earth, including in Florida, including in America. That you and I have been blessed with the finest role models and every minute and every second we exist on this earth, you and I must be promoting good in the footsteps of Ahlul Bayt because they are the exemplary models that no trial and tribulation in the world held them back. They were so powerful, just quick history. Ibn Sikkit al-Baghdadi was a companion of our 8th Imam and ninth Imam. Ibn Sikkit. He was the teacher of the children of Mutawakkil. And Mutawakkil had two children. To show you the power of Iman, right? That the penetration of Haq, even in the Caliphate, was ever so present not outside where we talk, but at the heart of the leadership, you find the lovers of Ahl al-Bayt are there probing mankind to take them in the right direction. So when the two children of Mutawakkil were tested, they did very well, extremely well. So then Mutawakkil looks at Ibn Sikit and says, so tell me, who is better, Hassan and Hussein, the grandsons of the Prophet, or my two sons, who is better? Now he trapped Ibn Sikit. Ibn Sikit now no longer could practice taqiyya. He could have, he could have continued. But his desire for shahada came to the forefront and he said, enough. He said, by God, Qambar, who was the servant of Ali ibn Abi Talib, is better than these two than their, and their father. Salawat ala Muhammad wa al Muhammad. And you know, Ibn Sikit's tongue was cut and he became shaheed. And Imam Ali al Naqi witnessed that. In other words, they were there. They were present at that period of time when this, this treachery took place. So for us to understand who were these Imams, young and old, even if Imam Mahdi salam, became the Imam at five, like Isa salam, became the, the, the protector, the messenger of God at birth, you and I are blessed with the finest role models. Let us pay, pay careful attention that when our imams listened, they carefully modulated. And I'm saying this in, within the scope of 45 minutes of presentation, 50 minutes, that it is extremely crucial to teach our children to understand communication, to carefully understand and always give benefit to the other side. That maybe their grievance has merit. May Allah give us a tawfiq, inshallah. Rabbana khfir lana wa li khwanina alladhina sabakuna bil iman. Wa la taj'al fi qulubina ghilla lilladhina amanu. Rabbana innaka raufur rahim. Allahumma inna nargabu ilayka fi dawlatin karima. Tu'izzu biha al-islam wa ahla. Wa tudhillu biha al-nifaq wa ahla. Wa taj'aluna fiha min al-du'ati la ta'atik wa al-qadati la sabilik. Wa tarzukuna biha karamat al-dunya. والآخرة وآخر الدعوة الحمد لله رب العالمين 
والسلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته I just want to announce also, I think Saturday, Brother Inayat, we will be having continuity of this dialogue, inshallah, with regards to education. And it's very important, I must say, that the foundations that have been laid by our coming to this Western world requires us to build infrastructures for our next generations. I find that we are very, very weak in infrastructure for the future of our children and our, and our adults too, even our seniors. We don't have strong infrastructures to protect the interests of our next generations with all due respect. We require to articulate it, we require to teach it, we require to establish it. Otherwise, we will leave behind a confused system that may lead our children to go astray. And God forbid that happens. God forbid, and inshallah, inshallah, we pray on these auspicious nights that it will not happen with our support, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Abzal and Salam. محمد وآل محمد يا إمام زمانا كرم كيجي يا إمام زمانا كرم كيجي نور آنکھوں کا میری برہا دیجئے یا امام زمانہ کرم کیجئے All together please یا امام زمانہ کرم گیری کے در پہ کیوں جائے فریاد کو آپ سر پہ سلامت ہو امتاد کو مانگنے کا سلیکہ بتا دیجئے یا امام زمانہ کیجئے یا امام زمانہ جس گریب آپ کی دہید ہو جائے گی در حقیقت میری اید ہو جائے گی زندگی میں ودن بھی دکھا دیجئے یا امام زمانہ کرم کیجئے یا امام ہر گریب آپ تو یوں میرے دل میں ہے اور یقین ہے کہ موجود مسجد میں ہے سب کی نظروں سے پریدہ ہتا دیجئے یا امام زمانہ کرم کیجئے یا امام زمانہ جو دعا دل میں ہے سب کی سالیجئے جو ہے مشکل میں ان کی مدد کیجئے اور ہی مریضوں کو جلد شفا دیجئے 
या इमा में जमाना करम कीजिए या इमा में जमाना है तमन्ना यही दह में मेरे इमाम हज जियारत की भी आरजू या इमाम सामरा में हमें अब बुला लीजिए या इमा में जमाना करम कीजिए नूर आखो कमेरी बढ़ा दीजिए या इमा में जमाना करम कीजिए मोहम्मद वाल मोहम्मद सलोत اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وأينا حتى تسكنه أرضك توعا وتمدعه فيها توينا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين السلام عليك يا رسول الله السلام عليك يا أمير المؤمنين السلام عليك يا فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين السلام عليك يا حسن المجتبى السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا وارث آدم السفوة الله السلام عليك يا وارث نوح النبي الله السلام عليك يا وارث إبراهيم خليل الله السلام عليك يا وارث موسى كليم الله السلام عليك يا وارث عيسى روح الله السلام عليك يا وارث محمد حبيب الله السلام عليك يا وارث أمير المؤمنين ولي الله السلام عليك يا ابن محمد المستفى السلام عليك يا ابن عني المرتضى السلام عليك يا ابن فاطمة الزهراء السلام عليك يا ابن خديجة الكبرى السلام عليك يا ثار الله وابن ثاره والوتر الموتور أشهد أنك كد أكمت السلاة وآتيت الزكاة وأمرت بالمعروف ونعيت عن المنكر وأتعت الله ورسوله حتى أتاك اليقين فلعن الله أمة قتلتك ولعن الله أمة ذنمتك ولعن الله أمة سميت بذلك فرضيت به يا مولاي يا أبا عبد الله أشهد أنك كنت نورا في الأسلام الشامخة والأرحام المتحرة لم تنجسك الجاهلية بأنجاسها ولم تلبسك من مدلهمات ثيابها وأشهد أنك من دعائم الدين وأركان المؤمنين وأشهد أنك الإمام البر التكي الرضي الزكي الهادي المهدي وأشهد أن العمة من غلدك كلمة التقوى 
وأنام الهدى ونور وطول وسقى والحجة على أحن الدنيا وأشهد الله وملائكته وأنبياءه ورسله أني بكم مؤمن وبيا بكم موكن بشرع ديني وخواتيم عملي وقلبي لكلبكم سلم وأمري لأمركم متبع صلوات الله عليكم وعلى أرواحكم وعلى أجسادكم وعلى أجسامكم وعلى شاهدكم وعلى غائبكم وعلى ظاهركم وعلى باطنكم السلام عليك يا ابن رسول الله السلام عليك يا ابن نبي الله السلام عليك يا ابن أمير المؤمنين السلام عليك يا ابن الحسين الشهيد السلام عليك أيها الشهيد وابن الشهيد السلام عليك أيها المظلوم وابن المظلوم لعن الله أمة كتلتك ولعن الله أمة ظلمتك ولعن الله أمة سمعت مذانك فرضيت به السلام عليكم يا أولياء الله وأحباء السلام عليكم يا أسفياء الله وعودة السلام عليكم يا أنصار دين الله السلام عليكم يا أنصار رسول الله السلام عليكم يا أنصار أمير المؤمنين السلام عليكم يا أنصار فاطمة سيدة نساء العالمين السلام عليكم يا أنصار أبي محمد الحسن بن علي الولي الزكي الناصح السلام عليكم يا أنصار أبي عبد الله بأبي أنتم وأمي تبتم وطابت الأرض التي في فيها دفنتم وفزتم فوزا عظيما فيا ليتني كنت معكم فأفوز معكم السلام عليك يا أبا الفضل العباس بن أمير المؤمنين السلام عليك يا ابن سيد الوسيين السلام عليك يا ابن أول الكوم إسلاما وأكدمهم إيمانا وأكوامهم بدين الله وأخوتهم على الإسلام أشهد لك أدنى سحت لله ولرسوله ولأخيك فنعم الأخ المواسي فلعن الله أمة كتلتك ولعن الله أمة ظلمتك ولعن الله أمة استعلت منك المحارم وانتهكت هرمة الإسلام فنعم الصابر المجاهد المحام الناصر والأخ الدافع عن أخي المجيب إلى طاعة ربه الراغب فيما زهد فيه غيره من الثواب الجزيل والصناع الجميل والحقق الله بدرجة آبائك في جنات النعيم اللهم إني ترست لزيارة أوليائك رغبة في ثوابك ورجاء لمغفرتك وجزيل إحسانك فأسألك أن تصل على محمد وآله الطاهرين وأن تجعل رزقي بهم دارا وعيش بهم قارا وزيارة بهم مكمونا وحياتي بهم طيبة وأدرجني دراج المكرمين واجعلني ممن ينكلم من زيارة مشاهد أحبائك مفلحا منجحا قد استوجب غفران الذنوب وستر العيوب وكشف الكروب إنك أهل التكوى وأهل المغفرة 
السلام عليك يا عمة المسلمين من ذرية الحسين علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي السلام عليك يا إمام صاحب الزمان أجل الله تعالى فرجك وسخر الله مخرجك وظهورك ورحمة الله وبركاته